Jared Poland Fro Nose Photo.com here with the Nikon 40 millimeter micro 2.8. This is a DX lens. Uh, it's a G also, 2.8G from Nikon. Uh, gone are the days where the entry level cameras basically can't get good glass. That old statement is gone because now you can get good glass for your entry level cameras and an affordable price. This is $279 and you're getting into a macro, micro, 2.8. So this goes in the lineup between the 35 1.8 and the 50 1.8 AFG, um, AFSG, and it fits right in the middle. So do you go with a 35? Do you go with a 50? Do you go with a macro micro lens? Well, if you have a need for shooting micro type photos or macro photos and you like shooting nature and you like shooting close-ups and, and, and really macro-esque type photos, then this is a good lens for you. Uh, coming up later, we're going to do a full-on test of it and give you the full res files to download and peek at and look at and see what you want. Um, a 35 is still a great walk around lens. This 40 is going to be a good walk around the lens as well, but I really want to get the test shots uh, up there so that you guys can see them and also see how close you can get when it comes to focusing. So let's get the unboxing underway. So you got a, oh, I just kissed it. You have a pouchy pouch in here. Yep, pouchy pouch and a lens hood always use this lens hood we will be using that shortly that's going on the ground you have a piece of cardboard with a triangle and a circle you have your five-year warranty and your cards and then here is the lens itself first things first it feels you know it's not uberly heavy but it's also not uberly duberly plasticky like the 18 to 55 it's about the same size as the 18 to 55 it says AFS micro Nikkor 40 millimeter 1. Point, uh, sorry 2.8 G it's a Nikon DX here's the front of it you can see it's a smaller lens I got to ask somebody over there at Nikon or if, if any of you guys know how come say a 50 millimeter is so much wider there's a lot more glass in there than the micros that are much smaller and have more of this area right around here for uh, whatever reason I would think that it's probably the lenses are inverted or backwards or whatnot I would like to hear somebody explain that to me on the side we have manual to auto switch and then the manual switch but it doesn't even feel like it's smooth focusing it just feels like the motor is still catching um, and that's interesting then you have a limiter full or 0.2 meters um, I'm not sure exactly how close you can focus but we will see when we play with it and it has a 52 millimeter thread for a filter which I would not personally use this is number wow this is number like 2061 this is one of the very first ones that have come out so let's get to the sniff test before we get to the actual test you know what I think it smells like Castle Grayskull and to verify that I so happen to have Castle Grayskull right here Yep, that's right. It smells like Castle Grayskull. So we've got the 40 millimeter micro Nikon 2.8 right here. We're gonna go do some tests. I've set up a test shooting area to see how close we can focus and to run this lens through its full on test to see what we think about it. And you guys can download the samples to then give your opinion. So coming up right after this snap of the fingers, we've got the full on test, results, feelings, thoughts, everything like that we'll be right back right and we're back here to test out the nikon 40 millimeter micro 2.81 well 2.8 g it's an afs it works on your nikon d3100 so it's going to work on any dx camera that nikon makes uh, keep in mind that the 40 millimeter on this dx is multiplied by 1.5 so it's a 60 millimeter equivalent uh, for 279 bucks is not bad at all um, so we're going to test out how this macro works. We have a whole lot of color stuff here. We've got Castle Grayskull with, um, what was He-Man's name? Do you remember He-Man's name? Paul, John, He-Man, anyway, he, what? Thor? No, his name was not Thor, Heidi, <laughs> not Thor. So you have He-Man, you have Skeletor, and uh, Skeletor's castle, and all this colorful stuff will make for some fun macro shots. Um, the first shot I was playing around with, actually, before, 
was to see how close I could get, and I could get between, literally I could get the Nikon in, so all the way to the left of the Nikon, or the end, and all the way to the right of the end, I could do it. So let me just test that out here, just to show you all in a picture what I was talking about. Holy close. Boom. Yes. So I was that close. You can literally see the space. There's a little bit of space there. Let's see how much closer. You can see from the video how close I am. Boom. That's focused. Here we go. Do it again. Boom. You're also going to notice that at certain times, it goes from 2.8 to 3.8 to 4.3. As the barrel extends, you're losing a little bit of light. That's why the f-stop has to change. That's one thing that I didn't understand when I first started shooting with macro, is that it's not a straight 2.8 all the time. Uh, because as you extend it out, you're going to lose some light and you need to work the aperture into that. So what else could we shoot here? Let's just play around in this battle scene. We have battle, battle scarred people and Hello, Skeletor! I don't even remember what Skeletor sounded like. And then this is a battle cat. Battle cat, boom! He's all fuzzy and stuff. I don't remember. Well, here's the battle bird. Yeah, battle bird. Look at the nice bokeh in the background. I don't know if Battle Bird looks like he's in focus or not. The eyes definitely are right down here. Boom. I just took two pictures. Yeah, there he's nice and sharp. There's that fuzzy guy, or the guy with these spikes on him. He gets shot. Oh, this is tiring stuff, shooting a scene of He-Man. Oh, yeah, 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 here we go. Oh, I'm going to get down here. I don't remember this guy's name. Oh, and there's He-Man on his battle cat. Boom, Battle Cat. Yes. So far, we're looking good. And after this, we're going to put these pictures into the computer, into Lightroom, so that we can play around with them. And, and then I'll put them up for you guys to look at. There's a guy on top of the castle. What was that? Adam just fell down. Adam fell? <laughs> His name was Adam. That's right. He-Man's name was Adam. Um... So this, oh, he did fall. He was right in front of me. I didn't even see it. Um, so what else could we shoot here? You can see, I'm going to back up a little bit to do a full shot of Castle Grayskull and the whole setup. Why don't I do that from a distance? Ooh, look at that. I didn't mean to take that picture, but I mean to take this one. Let's see. Nice. So we have a nice setup here. Let's focus in on this guy's hand. It looks good. You can see the old paint on his hands. Boom. So this is kind of interesting. I mean, the lens feels good, focuses quick, um, it's responsive. I mean, for $279, you cannot go wrong with a basic lens like this that's giving me the focus capability. And you saw how close I was to that Nikon, um, the, the lens cap. I mean, that's incredible to be able to get that close and still have it nice and sharp. That's a great feature to have. Let's see what we have around the backside. We have all the old dungeons and, and stuff. <clears throat> I'll shoot the camera. Just to give you the, 
the feel for what the 60 millimeter equivalent's gonna be. I mean, it looks really sharp, contrasty, and colorful, even just on this, uh, even on the back of the screen, and it's not even the best screen in the world. So Adam fell over. Let's get some color into this. We'll shoot this, this guy. I don't even remember who, what his name is. What's your name, buddy? What's your name? I don't remember his name. I don't, he is ugly. Boom. I'm moving quite a bit. And hopefully that is still being in focus because I'm moving. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump up the uh, ISO slightly just to give me a little bit more. I'm gonna go to 800 just so I can get some more shutter speed out of this. Because it's a little harder to hold it stable and vertical. Boom, right on his eye. Wow, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. What else could we shoot here? We got Skeletor, nice. This would be a good lens for shooting products. So there's Skeletor with the background all blown out. That looks really good. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really it. I mean, you get the point here. I've done wide shots. I've done really, really macro tight shots with this. Um, let's get some of these stickers. just so we can get the tightness of it. Pretty good, there we go. And let's bump up the aperture and see what we get when we go a little higher. Let's go to, let's go to F8 and try the same thing. So we should get most of it in focus now. Wow, even at F8, you look at how much the background blows out. That is really cool. That is really cool, even at F8. So this lens is working very well. I'm liking what it's doing. We're gonna keep this battle of good versus evil going on. We've got He-Man who, who I really think must have been on steroids in the 80s because nobody has muscles. You know what? Let's take a picture of his muscles. That's terrible, look at those muscles. Nobody had muscles like that back in the day. I mean, I don't even have muscles like that. So that's about it. Um, coming up right after this break, we're gonna get to the actual photos on the computer. We'll analyze them. We'll see how they turned out using the Nikon D3100 with the 40 millimeter macro, and uh, then leave it up to you guys to see what you think. I will put up the full res downloads of the files for you to full res. I thought my nose was bleeding, it's not. You can download the full res files, the JPEGs, see what you think about them, and that's about it. We'll be right back. So here we are, we're now back into the computer. We have Lightroom up and running with the sample images. So not only did I go and I shoot the battle between good and evil, He-Man versus Skeletor, I also went around and photographed some flowers. Uh, it's not my forte to go do macro work and things like that, but I thought it would be important to show you some other type of images that the lens would get. So close-ups of some uh, of Forsythia, um, some, uh, what, what kind of, what are those flowers that Lil can never remember what they are and I can't remember what they're, porchalacas, and then I shot these other orangey things where you'll see some interesting little buggy bug that found its way into the photo, which is pretty interesting. So let's look at all the photos from the shoot right here. So here was that first Nikon shot. You can see, I mean, here, I've got the lens cap right here and it's a smaller lens cap. This is it and look at it on the screen. I mean, this is a cool shot. I think Nikon may try to buy this from me because it's so cool. Um, shot with the D3100, you can see all the information up here, but this is, you know, I like this. You know, we'll zoom in and I know there's pixel peepers and as I've said many times in this video, you can go ahead and download these full res JPEGs. Um, I'm sure somebody will say something about fringing. Uh, in my mind, I doesn't bother me very much. You know, you know how it is with me. If the lens works and does what it's supposed to do, then good for you, you know, good for it, especially at $279. You can see how by just making a few movements, you may miss the focus. Um, or just, you know, if you're flat on, then you have a better chance of getting the thing in focus from top to bottom. But if you miss, you're gonna be off. 
so here we have the Battle Cat. I didn't think Battle Cat was a good representation because he's fuzzy, but you can see the focus locked right there. And as we move, boom, you've got the uh, Skull Mountain. I think they called the Skull Mountain. And um, cool story I'm actually going to tell you right now about Skull Mountain. Skull Mountain was a gift. And so this was the bribe, the ethical bribe that my dad gave me to ride my bike. Uh, if I was able to ride my bike down to the end of the block, I could get whatever I wanted at Kitty City at the time, which doesn't exist. Uh, Kitty City had a kangaroo instead of a giraffe, where uh, Toys R Us has a giraffe. But anyway, I, I did it. I rode to the end of the block. The only problem was I could now ride my bike, but I didn't know how to stop, so I ended up wiping out at the very end. But that's the story behind me getting uh, Skull Mountain. So we moved through. We've got the thunder whatever boom of five what i don't know what they called the bird but you can see this is nice and sharp nice and colorful i didn't really add very much to this you can see there's no vibrance or saturation added i just added my contrast to boomify it uh, so everything's nice and sharp that's great uh, and then we move to this bad boy look at the background so here's your bokeh blown out and then here's he focused right here at 2.8 really nice uh, i mean that that's a nice picture um, and let me, let me turn back to this camera. So this lens would be great for product photos. If you have to take pictures of action figures that you want to sell on eBay or put things up on Craigslist uh, to sell, if you're shooting jewelry or you're shooting coins, this is going to be a good lens for you to start with to shoot macro. Now keep in mind, when you are shooting macro, the closer you get to the subject, you may start to block out some light. So you may need to add some light around the, uh, you know, underneath of where you're shooting. That's why they sell ring flashes which go right on the uh, end of the um, lens so that you can then light what's underneath it. But it's a good lens for product photography, jewelry, um, things like we're shooting right here on the screen. So it'll be good for shooting these subjects like this. So really like it. Um, I think this is a really cool photo, really cool angle. You can see I'm focused right here on, he wasn't called, what was he called? Ramrod? No, he's not Ramrod. But I forget his name in that cloud car, but look at this. Look at this shot of He-Man on bat on his thunder no battle cat. It's not a thunder cat. Man, look at those calves. He's got the best calves I've ever seen. I mean, it's true. Look at the look at these. He's got like a 28 pack. No human being unless you're on major steroids. Hello, I'm on steroids. My name is He-Man. I love He-Man. If somebody has a battle action He-Man sword, please send it to me. That's all I want for my birthday. So we move on, we've got this scene. Let me skip past the other ones because I want to show you the alternative pictures that I shot. So we have a portulaca. And when you talk about portulacas, they're literally this big. They are not very big at all. This is a forsythia. I believe this is poisonous to animals and cats. You can see how vibrant the red has come out here. Um, focusing is a little difficult. Focusing is difficult with macro. As you get in tighter and tighter, your, your um, focus area shrinks more and more, especially at 2.8. So if you're off by just a little bit, um, your image is gonna be maybe sharp in a certain spot, maybe not even where you wanted it. So macro photography is doing a lot of manual focus. I had trouble shooting the flower because subtle wind was making it move. And as soon as it moves, even a subtle movement is gonna throw the focus out uh, because it's so macro, because of the macro and how tight you're trying to focus. Um, but I like this. I like the colors. Uh, I like the greens over here in the bokeh, uh, shooting at 800 ISO. You can see this is at f6.3. I bumped it up slightly. Uh, another shot. And then I went out, shot some wood, some bark of a tree for those people that want to zoom in and, and, you know, pixel peep and do all this. Shot some more bark before I came to these other little flowers, which are literally the same size as the lens cap. Um, nothing great here. I am not the best at these type of photos. Don't, you know, I don't profess to be at all, but wanted to show you these samples. And what I found really, really interesting is I saw a minuscule gnat. And when I say a minuscule gnat, I mean something that's literally that big. You can barely see it. I mean, these things are so small that they're the, they're the really little things that fly around that you sit there and you go like this and they're like, don't even land on your finger. This is a minuscule gnat, and look what we were able to do by shooting with this 40 millimeter macro. This is insanely cool, um, nice and sharp right on this thing. Let's take it in even further, one to one. 
Yeah, there's grain. Don't forget, we're shooting with a D3100. Not the best of the best of the best, but certainly not bad at all. And remember, this is zoomed in one-to-one -one for all you people who wonder why. Why does my picture look so bad? Well, don't zoom into one and one because that would be the size of a building if we were to look at it. Um, but that's, that's really it on there. And then you can just see another macro shot of the flower. So coming back over to here, that really wraps it up. I think it's a pretty good review showing the lens in action, showing different situations from shooting flowers to shooting um, uh, the He-Man characters to shooting little, little gnats. And it's great that that gnat is there because it's showing you the ability that you have with that lens on any DX camera to get things extremely small. So for $279, don't overanalyze anything. Don't sit here and look at the images and go, there's some purple fringing in the corner. Sure, that stuff may happen, and that happens with my 8514 for that matter, which is a still a $900 lens. But, you know, I wouldn't overanalyze this. At $279, if you have to shoot products, if you have to shoot uh, coins, if you have to shoot jewelry and things along those lines, or you just want to shoot nature and flowers and bugs, you're going to have to get pretty close with this because, you know, you have that 60 millimeter equivalent. That's why I like to use my 105 uh, because that allows me to be further away and still get the tight shots. But really, to get into the game for $279 with a macro, or they call it a micro lens, it is a, you know, a steal. You know, and again, like I said at the very beginning of the video, gone are the days where you can say, oh, there's no good glass for really inexpensive. You always talk about really expensive glass. Well, $279 for a 40 millimeter macro, $220 for a 35 1.8, and 200 and I think, what's it, 50 or 249 or something for the 50 1.8. You know what? Any one of those three lenses is going to do you great, and this macro... I like it. I like what I was able to do with it. I would throw it on a D3100 any day of the week. I would try it out for portraits. I would try it for everyday general shooting to have a 2.8 walk around lens. It gives you the macro capability. I think it's a must have in the bag uh, if you are interest, interested in that type of photography. So it could be a good first lens instead of the 3518. There's still benefits to having the 35 over the 40, but that's for another video and another time. Enjoy these files. Let me know what you think. You can download them all on the website. That's about it. That's the Nikon 40mm Macro 2.8 lens review. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya!